My name is Greg, and um, so I've been working with Elasticsearch for over four years now, uh, all at Automatic, uh, and I lead our Elasticsearch development efforts, uh, and we've been deploying Elasticsearch for a while. I want to sort of talk about different use cases I've seen people use Elasticsearch with, uh, sort of across WordPress. I skew a little towards Automatic just because I know that really well, but uh, I've seen it across many different cases. So, so first of all, I want to say, uh, talk a little bit about what Elasticsearch is. Um, just quickly, how many people in the room have heard of Elasticsearch before this talk? Wow, a lot. All right, cool. How many of you have used Elasticsearch? Hey, really good number. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to give a brief introduction, not really diving too much into the details. Show about six different use cases that I've seen people use and seen commonly used, and then finally talk about some opportunities in 2016 where uh, you can contribute to WordPress.org and help us use Elasticsearch more. So, um, what is Elasticsearch? So, at its simplest, it's uh, a search engine in the box. Uh, it is an open source project. It's been around for uh, over five years, and it's uh, an, it's Apache licensed and really works very well, sort of surprisingly well. You can deploy it on some servers, and you can also deploy it across many servers. So it's scalable, distributed, and kind of magically just scales for up to a pretty good point of tens of millions of documents. Additionally, it's, it's an analytics engine. So uh, you can index things about number of comments on, on a post and then look at distributions of those comments across posts. Look at most common terms across those posts. And finally, uh, it is multilingual. So it's built on a library called Lucene. This library has been around for uh, 15, 20 years, and it uh, supports many different languages, which is important for us as people working in an area where we want to help 25% of the web and help everybody regardless of their language. So the way I think of deploying Elasticsearch is sort of as this mirror, a mirror of your data. So WordPress, all your data is stored in MySQL. And for Elasticsearch, we want to take all of that data, uh, sort of instrument WordPress so that every time a post changes, every time every time a post changes, we go and put that into Elasticsearch, re-index the data. Every time uh, a tag or a category changes, we have to go and re-index all the posts that those tags and categories are on. So there's a lot of sort of back and forth between the two where we're trying to keep this, this data up to date. But I don't like to think of this as a one-to-one -one mirroring of data. I like to think of it as a funhouse mirror. So uh, it, it, it makes sense to me to, to really think about Elasticsearch as a different kind of data store, a different way that you're looking at your data. And so this, this funhouse aspect allows you to take Elasticsearch and, uh, and take, the, take your WordPress data and get a different view of it, uh, a view that enables you to search across it, but also run these sorts of analytics and different types of queries on it. So uh, a number of folks uh, across WordPress have found Elasticsearch useful. Uh, there's a number of folks doing uh, hosted WordPress plus Elasticsearch, and that, this seems to be growing. Uh, stuff I've worked on is WordPress.com VIP, where we've been doing this for over two years now. And I've seen you know, Pagely and WP Engine are both, both working on this. There's a number of other cases. I think I saw a tweet yesterday from Cloudways, who I don't really know anything about, but has uh, done, uh, is sort of promoting Elasticsearch and WordPress. And also, there's a number of agencies out there. So uh, Alley Interactive and 10up have written a lot of code and uh, open sourced a lot of code for merging Elasticsearch and WordPress. There's a number of other agencies that I think are also working in this area. Um, and uh, so many of us are sort of out there looking at data, looking at how we can use Elasticsearch to improve uh, to improve WordPress. And there's a bunch of code out there. So there's four different plugins that I know of, um, probably a couple more actually, uh, and a, a couple of libraries out there. So there's sort of different people exploring how to do this integration. All right, so on to our use cases. So I broke this up into sort of six main use cases that I've seen out there. There's certainly more. 
Um, the first one, of course, is site search. Uh, I think everybody in the room probably has their complaints with built-in WordPress site search. Uh, it's uh, complained about relatively regularly. I had someone complain just a few minutes ago. And, <laughs> and, uh, and yet, lots of smart people have tried to work on it. Uh, and the problem is really that MySQL is not built for that. Uh, it's hard to scale. It's hard to get really good relevant data. Uh, so we need to, to move to some other technology to do it. Uh, and Elasticsearch, I think, really really enables us to do that. I've seen a number of people customize site search to do this sort of thing. So uh, this is the first site that was launched on WordPress.com VIP, where we did uh, Elasticsearch support. Uh, it was uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation site. It was built by Ali Interactive. Um, and uh, in addition to really good relevant search results that, they, that they've been really happy with, um, they've also done things like faceted searching. So the idea of, for instance, on Amazon, when you go and search for something, you can then filter down by uh, you know, what company made something or things like that. So in this case, you can look at 120-ish results and filter down to the ones that just have slides as an example. And this sort of filtering aspect is something Elasticsearch is great at. You can also see them doing uh, date filtering uh, and using these sorts of things to um, sort of speed up your search and enable new features for users. Um, filters in Elasticsearch are extremely performant. They're well cached and uh, yeah, work really well uh, for building a lot of different features. So. Um, also, I want to highlight sort of the, the multilingual aspect of this. Uh, this is, uh, I'm told, the top site in Turkey for, uh, for recipes. And they've been recently building out a whole lot of Elasticsearch infrastructure. Uh, and find, you know, the developers there are all, Tur all speak native Turkish speakers. And they're, doing, they're finding Elasticsearch working really well for them. Uh, you know, as, a, as an English audience, we often don't think about just how hard these sorts of things sometimes can be. Uh, so I think Elasticsearch sort of uh, out of the box gives us, way, gives us ways and the community ways to, to build on these sorts of things. So what's missing? Um, site search is something I could talk about for days. <laughs> uh, there's uh, a lot of things that, that aren't great about it. It's hard to fit that all into this talk. but. Um, the, the highlight I sort of wanted, want you to take away is um, search is not just about posts. Um, search is about providing answers. And uh, there's a lot of different features that can get you there. Some of them are listed here. Uh, but uh, if you're just indexing posts, you are limiting yourself to what information you're giving someone. So comments matter, uh, widgets matter, everything on the site matters. Um, even things that aren't on the site matter. So if someone types contact information into uh, a search box, it should return information about how to get in touch with the website even if that's not anywhere displayed on the website, potentially, right? This is the sort of thing that just because those individual words are not on the site doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to answer that question. Um, and uh, in order to really get to a point where we're, we're doing this sort of thing, I think the, the key piece we need to do is look at data. Uh, so these are a spelling. Uh, these are spelling errors on support.wordpress.com. 50% uh, of all queries on there have a spelling error in them, uh, which is shocking, <laughs> right? And uh, not what you expect. And yet, these are. This is 50% of users who have a bad user experience if you don't correct for their spelling. Um, you know, you can look at these and you know exactly what word they mean. But if your search isn't handling it, then you're you're failing users. All right. The second use case is related posts. Um, I spent a good chunk of a year working on Jetpack and WordPress.com related posts with some other folks at Automatic. And uh, uh, it's a very major feature, really, for any modern website. Pretty much every website sort of expects that when you get someone on your site, you want to keep them on your site. And related posts is a great way to do that. Um, we see tons of queries. This you probably can't see too greatly, but uh, this is uh, the, the top line is the number of queries for WordPress.com, and the bottom is for Jetpack for related posts. And we're in the 70, 80, 90 million range per day. Um, and so it's a very common use case that lots of people use. Uh, and, I, and the relevancy of related posts is, you know, from a technical point of view, I'd say that providing related posts is, is relatively straightforward to do. But providing good relevancy is more than just 
what is related. So here's, here's an Elasticsearch query. This is the only real code I have in this talk. Uh, and the, the highlight to, to point out here is that the query, it's for a post that only has three words in it, Trinity College Library. Um, it's an image post. And uh, there's, so there's not much context to find other, other posts with. Um, so what we do is we run this query, and then we take the top 50 results and we re-rank them. Uh, and the re-ranking is for using a feature called rescore, which is sort of at the bottom, which is, might be hard to see. But the idea is we take uh, liker IDs and commenter IDs, people who have interacted with this post and other posts, and we look for overlap between those. And we get more information about what might be related. And we get more information about what might be relevant to a user when they're, if they like something, they might be more likely to go somewhere else and like additional things. Um, so deploying this change on WordPress.com, which we did a few years ago, uh, it actually increased our click-through rate by about uh, half a percent, which in the realm of click-through rates, where you're talking about one, two, three percent click-through rates, uh, is really very uh, significant. All right. Third use case, this is, uh, I think, the thing I'm most excited about recently. Uh, I've actually been excited about it for a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, so WP Query is uh, the class that wraps um, queries for WordPress going to the database, so getting posts. So for instance, um, anytime you're, you're trying to get all your posts for your homepage, it's going through WP Query to query the database. Uh, and the idea is that you could instead replace that query. Don't run it on MySQL, but run it against Elasticsearch. Um, and in a couple of cases where this happens, the Elastic Press plugin supports some amount of replacing WP Query. And there's a library called ESWP Query by Ally Interactive that actually passes the WordPress core unit tests. So you can entirely replace really any WP Query with ESWP Query. Um, and this is really easy to do. So here's an example. This is a change set for VIP on WordPress.com. Uh, and the, the, me the, the commit message is offload very slow taxonomy, not in query to Elasticsearch. And um, in order to do this change, to just switch from, one, from, from MySQL to Elasticsearch, it's just one line of code. So it's args es equals true uh, in the get posts call. Uh, and this is, what, this is a very popular way that WordPress.com VIP uh, solve scaling problems. Uh, so it's very popular. So these are all the times it happened uh, in October and one from August. I've highlighted the, the, the painful words that people write into these commit messages, like expensive and poor <laughs> uh, and performance. Uh, so we see this sort of thing all the time. Uh, it, it's a good way to solve problems. Uh, it's also a very popular query that we run at this point. So. This is, the top line is the ESBWP queries, and the bottom line is VIP site search. Uh, so site search, so VIP is running site search. And you can see that even from the initial get-go of when we launched ESWP query, it's been 5x more popular than actually doing site search. Uh, so the number of queries we run is, is very common. It's actually even more common than Jetpack-related posts. So the, again, the, the bottom line is, uh, is Jetpack-related posts. Um, so this is a common use case where we, we can use Elasticsearch to solve real everyday problems uh, and scale websites better. All right, fourth use case is uh, Logstash. Uh, so Logstash is an additional open source project. It uh, works with Elasticsearch. So it takes, takes logs, text logs, and imports them into Elasticsearch, and then enables you to search on those logs. Um, so I've seen this deployed for things like email and PHP logs and access logs. Um, and uh, all of this sort of enables you to run systems and enables you to debug systems that, that are running in real time. We actually recently launched uh, uh, this function called log to log stash on WordPress.com, which enables us to just take any arbitrary set of fields and stick it into Elast stick it into through log stash into Elasticsearch. Um, this, uh, I was recently accused by our head of systems of using this as a hammer and hitting too many things with it. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, but I think I've seen it deployed three or four times in like the three weeks since it was launched. So I think, you know, this is the sort of thing that's it's solving a lot of problems um, and enabling people to solve problems. And uh, part of the reason why it's so popular is on the back end, uh, you can then read these things and create 
histograms of the data um, and look at logs and what's most frequent and sort of dig into your data interactively, find problems and fix them. Uh, so yeah, and I, I mentioned here WordPress.com and um, I know of many others doing this. So I know um, a number of other hosts are doing this. I know a number of agencies are working with this sort of thing. Um, so it's pretty common across, across WordPress in general uh, and across the tech industry, frankly. So the fifth use case, content re-ranking. Um, the idea here is um, a user comes to your site and you say, okay, I know something about this user. They have, at the very least, an IP address, but probably some other headers and information about them. Or maybe they're logged in and we really know a lot about this user. Uh, in that case, maybe we shouldn't just be showing them the default home page with whatever date-based listing it is. Uh, let's show them what they want. If we think we know them and we think we know something about them, let's show them things that are actually going to engage them. Um, so. Someone who is amazing at this, of course, is Facebook. Um, so uh, Facebook will go and, um, you know, their news feed is, in my opinion, really awesome and impressive to look at. So I go and look at it, and I want to click like on things, and I want to comment on things. Uh, it is uh, optimized, and they've put a whole lot of effort into it. I think this is a general thing that the web probably is going to have more of. Um, you know, optimizing for these sorts of things, optimizing for people actually interacting with your site can help your site a lot. Um, and so uh, some cases where I've seen this deployed, um, so GeoSearch. So the idea, so Elasticsearch supports uh, lat and latitude and longitude uh, in documents. And so you can do searching or ranking things based on distance. Um, and uh, you can take this idea and um, be able to uh, look at a user's location based on their IP address and then show them only things that are local to them. Uh, so a good example is radio stations where, uh, you only, where someone goes to a, a, a website that maybe has many radio stations across the country and you want to just show them things that are local to them, show them articles that are local to them that are going to be more relevant to them. All right. Our final use case, breaking the blog boundary. Great alliteration. <laughs> uh, so uh, the content of a WordPress site uh, essentially for a single blog basically lives in nine MySQL tables. Um, there's a couple of global tables that I'm ignoring, but the nine are the, the, the key piece of it. Uh, and then those nine tables, let's say we have 20 sites, suddenly you have 180 tables. So if you have 180 tables and you want to find content across them, obviously this is going to be much less efficient than looking across a single, single blog. Um, and uh, this, this comment, and it, more than just searching for it, what if you just want to rant, list those posts uh, by date? Um, look at everything you've written across all of those blogs by date. Um, so instead of putting into MySQL, let's use our Funhouse mirror and throw it all into one big Elasticsearch index. Um, and if you want to look at a single blog, you can still do that. You just filter by blog ID. But you can look at subsets of blogs. You can look at the entire data set. You can filter by user, et cetera. So uh, a great example uh, that was recently open sourced of this uh, is Calypso. Um, so Calypso, for those of you who haven't heard, is, is the WordPress.com logged in uh, administration. And uh, it, is, uh, it was recently open sourced. And there's two pages, the posts page and the pages page. Uh, and both of those, the endpoints are powered by Elasticsearch for things to be like, so for instance, in this case, I have about 100 sites um, on WordPress.com and Jetpack. And I can search across all of them and find all the pages I wrote uh, about Elasticsearch. Um, and this is the sort of thing that it's, really not, not possible to scale very scale on standard WordPress. Uh, so the, having this funhouse mirror that, that provides us all these features, the things like search, the things like breaking boundaries between blogs really um, enables us to look at our data differently. Um, and this, this extends to other things. So you can think about related posts um, or search across all of these sites. Related posts where you want to um, show people related posts that are on, on other sites of yours and you know, sort of have that cross-posting aspect across things. All right. Um, so those are sort of the six main use cases. Um, 
there's a couple of opportunities in 2016 to, if you're interested in becoming more involved in learning about Elasticsearch uh, and contributing to WordPress.org. Um, so uh, the first one is WordPress.tv is getting a major rewrite. Uh, this has already been announced on uh, make.wordpress.org slash TV. Um, and there's some ideas here of improving related posts, but also things like we could do this geo lookup type thing of we could see where a user is coming from and only show them those videos that are local to where they live. Um, we could look at their browser settings and understand where they are, um, where they are, so what language they are likely to want content in, um, and make WordPress.tv that much more engaging and that much more useful. Um, so this is an area where uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Queries need to be written, uh, integration with theme, the theme, thoughts about how to make this a great user experience integrated with Elasticsearch um, that, frankly, we need people to start working on. Um, and uh, and uh, an additional case uh, in 2016 that is um, the translation of WordPress itself. So uh, WordPress gets translated with uh, open source software called Glotpress. Um, and there's this idea that uh, there's been a ticket open for a couple years. Um, the idea being, if you have a string like, are you sure you want to delete this page? Um, and it hasn't been translated to a particular language, let's look at other strings that have. So let's look at, are you sure you want to delete this comment? Are you sure you want to delete this user? Show those to the translator and enable them to more quickly translate the other string that's not translated. Um, and, you know, translation is a... I'm pretty sure, I feel like every time I've seen a, a, a state of the word that Matt gives, I feel like translation comes up every year. Uh, and how do we get more translations across all the different languages so that we can really make the software work well for everybody on the planet? Um, and I think this is one of those ways that we can try and help enable that. So uh, we need people to, to look at how to build these fuzzy queries and these fuzzy matches and how do we, how do we actually scale and run an Elasticsearch cluster for .org, for instance. And of course, there is an elephant in the room. Um, that elephant's name is WordPress.org search. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, uh, there's been lots of work on it over, over the years, and a lot of folks have, uh, there was some really good work uh, a year and a half ago on like plugins and theme searches that improved a lot of stuff. Um, but I think everybody feels, I, feel, I see this come up a lot on comments, threads, and things on the internet of people complaining about it. Um, and the truth is, I don't think this is going to happen in 2016. Uh, I think that in order to get there, we need more people who know how to use Elasticsearch and deploy these services and who can learn to do so. Um, and so these other two projects, GlotPress and WordPress.tv, is kind of how we get there. Um, so this is sort of partly why I give this talk, is to sort of encourage people who are interested in Elasticsearch or, uh, and it within the WordPress community to uh, contribute to these areas and learn how to do it. Um, and then we can do things like improving forum search for plugins where there isn't even a search. Um, so um, that's my talk. And uh, I'm, on, I'm happy to answer questions about Elasticsearch now. I'm also uh, on .org Slack as GI Brown and happy to answer Elasticsearch questions really anytime. So thank you. Hi. The, the question answer. Asker. Really hi. Hi. Um, earlier, you showed a slide about the queries being 50%, like having typos 50% of the time. Yes. So the spelling of the third and fourth are actually right spelling in French. So I think that, the, and that leads to my question is, yep. is Elastic, uh, Elasticsearch is great at multilingual content in separate silos, but how do you deal with multilingual searches like letting the user entering any language and actually defining what language that is and providing them with the proper content. So that's an interesting, that's a very interesting use case. Um, so we, so on WordPress.com, we actually do run language detection. Uh, so there's a plugin called LangDetect that we run on WordPress.com. It, it's a plugin for, sorry, a plugin for Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch also has a plugin ecosystem. Um, and so that detects like six, upwards of 60 different languages. It doesn't work as well on short content. So for a single search, it's 
a little trickier. Um, but it is, it is certainly a, a, you know, I think it highlights an, an important part of um, spelling errors is it's not always clear that it's a spelling error. It could just be a non-native speaker saying it wrong, which is another reason why it's, it's sort of failing users. I think there's a, there's a huge area within site search where um, the words that, a, that you use on your website, sort of there's a disconnect between those words and what a user using your website has. Um, and that's a hard problem to solve because the, the, the differences in vocabulary and spellings are sort of interrelated. And I think that's, that's going to be a harder long-term challenge we need to, to try and solve. But I, don't, I think we're quite a ways from being able to solve it. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah. Uh, I hope I understand Elasticsearch as it kind of creates a centralized database of information that is then searchable. Um, you know, what kind of, is it able to go into the different media library pieces like PDF files or text documents and almost index the content of those and get that as results? So uh, I have seen people do that. Um, it depends on how you index it. Um, so natively, it does not necessarily do that. Uh, although, so usually, what you'd have to do is is take those documents, uh, those uh, media documents or whatever, pull out whatever inf type of information you'd want, and then index it. Um, so some examples of that is um, actually indexing media in WordPress, of course, uh, where even if you wanted to take um, images, you may want to pull out uh, sort of meta information uh, and be able to index that meta information for filtering purposes or for you know, being able to help people find things. Um, there's cool examples of um, even, so Google was recently released stuff, uh, some APIs on taking an image and actually describing it using their API, so describing it in natural language. Um, so you could even think about ideas of, of taking images, uh, running it through that sort of API, and indexing that data so that you have more information about what's in your images in your, uh, in your site. So it, you know, that's something that's far away, but theoretically possible. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Taylor Lovett. Just wanted to add to that. There are there is an Elasticsearch plugin right now. I think it's called like the the Attachment Mapper plugin that lets you index PDFs and some other cool content types. Cool. Um, you're you're at, you're at um, Ten Up, right? Yeah. Um, cool. We're the Elasticpress people. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your code. It's really awesome. Good Thank job. you. Um, yeah. I, I had thought there was some so uh, a way of pull, is it only PDFs that it pulls out of? It's, it's a bunch of content types, and we actually have something for indexing that. I think we're about to open source that. It's not quite ready yet, but check back soon. Awesome. Any more questions? Commentary? Oh. Um, how do you guys handle actually mapping the IDs, and how do you handle updates in Elasticsearch? Um, so mapping of IDs, uh, you mean for like post IDs? Post IDs specifically, yes. Uh, so we use, uh, I mean, we use, we index the same post IDs that we have in the database. Uh, so we use, sorry, we use, we use blog ID and post ID together. So when things are in the same index, we're using uh, to in, to to uniquely identify any individual post. We use both blog ID and post ID for all that. All of that, and when we do our queries, we're usually we take blog ID and post ID as our results, and then we actually do a lookup from MySQL to get the final content because we don't necessarily trust that the Elasticsearch mirror has the final content, um, and that's something we've been doing pretty much from the beginning to make sure that um, to ensure that we we actually have the real final content that we deliver to the user. Did that cover all of? You also asked about updates, I guess. Uh, or keeping things up to date. In 1.5, uh, the uh, in, in Elasticsearch, they took out the ID mapping, so you actually can't like control the IDs in Elasticsearch. Ah, I see what you're asking. Uh, yes. Uh, well, hmm. Let's take it offline and talk about it. <laughs> All right. So I'm not a sysadmin, and spinning up an Elasticsearch instance for me would be very challenging. Yeah. Um, while I wait for my hosting provider to get Elasticsearch instances running so that I can actually use them, is there something like, uh, like a third-party Elasticsearch service that I sub can subscribe to or pay to? 
so I can use Elasticsearch? Yeah, so there's there's a number of different services that run Elasticsearch at this point. Um, the, the main company that um, uh, all the, the contributors to Elasticsearch, uh, the company called Elastic, uh, Elastic.co, they run a hosted SaaS service. There's a number of other ones that also do as well, um, and uh, a lot of them end up sort of running it on AWS, and so you sort of pay them to manage the, uh, the Elasticsearch indices for you. So that is a, a way to go, yeah. Could you describe how you control access to the data in the Elasticsearch service? Yeah, so uh, Elasticsearch by default does not have any security built in. Um, there are things you can uh, purchase from Elastic.co for security, um, but so for WordPress.com, which is the real case I know about, uh, everything for us is internal and hidden behind our APIs, and so all of our access checks are actually um, going through some other system. A lot of them are going through WordPress.com itself before the query goes on to Elasticsearch. Um, so it's it's something that um, you have to sort of pay attention to. One one really non-obvious thing is if you deploy it locally to your own VPS, uh, you really need to turn on, you need, you need to only allow local host uh, type access or only things from a certain place because by default, you'll, uh, Elasticsearch allows traffic to come from anywhere. And if you do that, you will absolutely get hacked. <laughs> uh, anything else? Awesome. Thank you very much.